back to Jeffrey's timeline when he says what happened. He says Colette went to bed that night at 11.30. Okay, I'm going to buy that. He says he stays up, he's reading a book, blah, blah, blah. Two o'clock in the morning, he does the dishes. Don't know. But at 2.30 a.m., Okay, now we're getting close to the murder time, right? 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. At 2.30, he goes to bed. He finds that Kristen, the two-year-old, has wet his bed. He gets her up. He takes her back to her room. Remember, this is not what he normally did, according to Colette, what she told her class but he takes her back to her room gives her a bottle he goes and sleeps on the couch and that's when chaos ensued so we can narrow down everything I think he's telling the truth you know up till 2 30 in the morning when he goes to bed he had just worked a 24 hour shift at the hospital According to the CID reports, a 24-hour shift. He had taken a nap, but he had worked a 24-hour shift. Very important. After he finishes reading and doing dishes, I don't know if I buy that one, but we'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt so far. He then goes into his room. And I believe... That Kimberly was in his bed, not Kristen. And Kimberly wet the bed. Now, why is he saying Kristen? Well, because I believe that he's distancing himself from the reason that this murder took place. Kimberly is five. She also had a bedwetting issue. Now, whether this issue was cured or not, is unknown however what leads me to believe this is that Kimberly's blood is found in that master bedroom not a trace amount good six inch puddle of it now I'm not saying that he lashed out at the child and started beating her because of this I'm not saying that but listen to what I think probably took place. Now remember back when I said about the fibers being the most important and then I flopped that? He had a pajama top on. When Army investigators searched that house, they got down with a magnifying glass, looked all over the carpets, Jeffrey McDonald says he got into this big scuffle with all these people in the living room, upturned the coffee table. He's getting stabbed. He's blocking the stabbing with his shirt top that got pulled up over, okay? Wouldn't you expect to find fibers out there? Remember we said, shouldn't we find blood? We didn't find no blood. We're going to find fibers from this violent fight, right? No, not one fiber in that living room. Guess where the majority of those fibers are found? Gina, you got it. In the master bedroom. So what does that tell you? Yes, there was a struggle in the master bedroom. Now, what happened? It's my belief 
that Kimberly, not Kristen, was in his bed when he went to go to bed after working the 24-hour shift. He's tired, wants to go to bed. He goes to get in it. She wet the bed. Kristen, I think he would have a little bit more slack with. She's two. Kimberly, come on. You're five. We corrected this. Now I'm angry. Colette wakes up. Some sort of... I'm not a psychic. I don't believe in psychics. I've told you that. And not even a psychic going to be able to tell you this. Something transpired right there between Colette and Jeffrey McDonald. This is a domestic disturbance homicide beyond a shadow of a doubt. They get into a fight. Now, how does it come about? It is coming about because of the bedwetting, but how does it turn to murder? Well, the argument takes place. A neighbor hears the argument. Dogs start barking. Somehow, this turns violent. And we know this from all the fibers, the torn pocket of Jeffrey McDonald's pajama top is located in that bedroom. Those fibers from his shirt getting ripped are found underneath Colette's body. Are you with me so far? Because let me tell you now how the weapons get introduced. More specifically, the club. Okay, when I was thinking about this and doing my research, I could not, I could not come to grips as to, okay, I knew it was him. You know, you go in with an open mind. Could be an intruder, but the evidence, everything, totality of everything got me to rule out the intruder. Now it's him. Okay, that was fairly easy. What is difficult is why and how. The urine stain, from what I researched, and I couldn't find it the second time I went back in to look for it. But it stuck out to me that it said that it could not have come from Kristen. But it couldn't be ruled to anybody else. So that backed up my theory that it was Kimberly. Now why do I think it was Kimberly? Because her blood being in that bedroom. Okay. That's significant. She was awake. Unlike Kristen who was asleep in bed. Kimberly was awake. How does she get awake? She either gets awake because of the argument between Jeffrey and Colette, or she's involved in the argument, which I I don't necessarily believe. She was in that bed, I believe. She peed the bed. This started the argument. He's tired. 24-hour shift. Back to the club. So Colette and him get into this argument. How it escalates to a physical fight I don't know, but it does. He pushes her at some point. He punches her, whatever it is. He pushes her against that bed. And that bed, remember the, the club? You know, the bed being on top of the club? When he pushes her against that bed, or she falls down, it dislodges that. She stands up. He punches her. She falls down. When she's laying on that ground, facing that bed, what does she see? A weapon of opportunity. He doesn't see that because he's not on the ground. In his mind, if he's fighting with her, he is not going to be like, oh yeah, I got this wooden club here. Let me hit her with it. No way. No way that happens. She introduces it. She introduces it as a weapon of opportunity. She got punched in the face. That is Bohr's evidence in the autopsy report. When she's laying down on the ground, she comes up with that club. 
to defend herself. All that does is enrage him more. And now it turns from a very physical domestic disturbance to murder. Because he grabs that club from her and he smacks her with it right across the head. And she drops. Now, does he turn and hit his daughter Kimberly, who is probably trying to get in between them to stop it? Yes. Now, the prosecution, I believe, will say he hit her accidentally. I don't believe that because of the, the force of that injury, cr crushing her skull, busting her nose enough that it goes to one side. That's not an accident. Okay? That's on purpose. He hits her with it. She falls right there next to her mom. That's how her blood gets on the carpet in the master bedroom. Now, how does the other weapons get introduced? Well, I would surmise that he goes and gets the knife. He introduces those weapons. Now, why does he do that? He's still blinded by rage, okay? But he realizes what he's done. He starts to concoct a plan of cover-up. Now, th did he hit Colette more than once? Yes. She's probably laying there, more than likely unconscious from her wounds. Kimberly, it only took one hit. Okay? He starts freaking out, thinking, what have I done? I gotta cover this up. So how does he cover it up? He takes Kimberly, carries her back to her bed, puts her there. He starts maybe putting those injuries, those self-inflicted injuries to himself. Now, the one on his head, I believe Colette did that. I believe she got a shot in on that club on him. Not enough to break the skin, not enough to cause bleeding, but enough where it, it triggered him, where he took that club from her and then he beat her to death. But she, she didn't die right away. She was just, she was unconscious. And how do we know that? Well, because then after he, he starts coming down, okay, from what he's done. He's got his wife laying dead. He thinks she's dead in the bedroom, master bedroom. He has Kimberly laying next to her somewhere on the floor. He's carried her back to her bed, put her in bed. She's, she's dead from that head wound. He's got to cover up, okay? What do I do? What do I do? He's kind of panicked, okay? He inflicts a stab wound to himself. He's a doctor. He knows how far to go, what's good, what's not. You know, the, the self-inflicted wound wasn't to his heart, okay? It's over here. Where would you think the wound would be? If somebody is attacking you from the front, okay? It'd be here. Wouldn't he have stab wounds to his hands? Not one. Not one stab wound to his hands. But yet he was blocking all the stab wounds. And his, his pajama pot, top showed, what, 28, 48 stab holes in it. That's why he says, hey, look, I'm telling the truth. But they weren't torn. If you're stabbing at fabric and you're moving it, it's going to tear. This wasn't. All those stab wounds through his pajama top was from it being stationary. Okay? Now the prosecution will say that he placed that on top of Colette's chest and stabbed down through it. Possible. Very possible. Maybe even probable. But they definitely was stationary when he put those in there. So his cover up. Now now what's he what's he have to do? His blood was found on a the magazine, not his blood, I'm sorry. It, it was a blood stain. And I apologize, I'm not sure what victim's blood it was. I want to say Colette's. In this Esquire magazine that he has, that his coffee table is laying on, is an article about the Manson murders that had happened months earlier. And how they had written pig in blood, 
Elder Skelter. Death to Piggies. Kill the Piggies. Does that sound familiar? Okay. Blonde hair. Floppy hat girl. Saying that. Now, when I heard this, I thought it was asinine that the prosecution would say, after killing his family, he sits down and reads a magazine, right? Who does that? I don't think that's what happened. I think what happened was it, it triggered in his mind as a cover-up. Didn't I read somewhere about those Manson murders? I read something. What did they write? What, what did they... That's why he referenced the magazine. He went back to refresh his memory. Oh, piggies, pig, written in blood. Yep. Then he went to the headboard and wrote pig in Colette's blood with a surgical glove. That's why there was only a piece of it found in there. He probably flushed the other part of it, not sure. But it doesn't address Colette's blood in Kristen's bedroom, right? Remember I said there was a significant amount in there. I believe Colette was not dead. She regained consciousness and staggered, stumbled to her daughter's bedroom to protect her. While there, he heard this and he went in and he crushed her with a couple more shots of that club. We know this the amount of blood deposit that is Colette's blood type in that room. Kristen woke up. Now she's awake. She heard this. He carries Colette's body back there or he kills Kristen right then and there. The prosecution will tell you there was significant, there was a time gap. That Kristen was collateral damage. I believe this. I'm just not sold on how quickly he killed Kristen relative to him finishing off Colette in that bedroom. Now, why didn't he let Colette just lay there? I think in his mind, he's still coming up with a story, okay? And that's why he took Colette back to their bedroom on the floor. Now his pajama top fibers are underneath Colette when he takes her back there. All the fibers. Those fibers are from a struggle, folks. A domestic disturbance between the married couple. His fibers are also found in the other bedrooms. Now according to him... His shirt was ripped off. He had his shirt off. It was never a part of him when he went and checked on his kids. So how did his fibers get in there? He goes after Colette is dead. He goes and gets a knife. And he goes in and he ensures death by stabbing them. Numerous times in the chest and the throat. Same with uh, Kristen and Kimberly. Okay. The knife he introduces in order to finish them off. Now why does Kristen have stab wounds in her back? She has them in her chest. She has them in the back. With an ice pick, which are not as deep as the ice pick wounds in Colette. That would lead you to believe maybe that he's had a cooling off period and she's collateral damage. She had waken up, I believe, during the assaults. She had defensive stab wounds to her hands. Sad. Such a significant parallel to Chris Watts, I believe. But the stab wounds to the back, it could surmise that he didn't want her facing him. And she's easy to control. 
just pull her over onto her stomach and stab her in the back. Incredibly callous. Not the work of an intruder, folks. No way, no how. Nope. Am I 100%? Nope. Pretty damn close, though. So.